Hi folks. This is uh, about a 14 by 12 uh, board. It's hardboard primed with PVA glue, which I've added to. I my pot ran out, so I, it's about two to one, two parts uh, water, one part of glue. Now. I'm going to do a knife painting. I like knife paintings, it's my favourite way. And this way I can use oil paint uh, without the solvents. And I've got so many oil paints, I've got hundreds of pounds worth of them bought over many years and I'm struggling to get the tops off some of them. So now that was a view off of television. It's the Hebridean coast and a stormy stormy sea close into shore now I, I do have a thing about copying exactly from photographs i think if you copy if you're copying from photographs you're doing one form of art which is fine but if you want to be creative you just use the photos as a guide and don't try to copy them exactly do your own thing Add, uh, add uh, skies that you want to add rather than because they're there we've got to go in just have fun with the paint especially if you're a beginner I, and i know it's very difficult to, to 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 find reference material enough of it but so when you get a bit more experience and you've done quite a few paintings you'll find that you'll be able to work from your own original creations or not as the case may be and make them into a, a, a work of art good or bad. So uh, I'll do a bit of a drawing. Uh, I'll uh, just put a bit of white spirit in, a, in my dish here and get an old old brush and the paint, the colours I've got, I can't really show you the colours without altering my camera setup as usual. One day I'll have it sorted. Uh, but just just an old, an old oil brush. Uh, that one probably. So I've got I've got on the on my palette here so a piece of greaseproof paper on on a makeshift table on my box easel. So I've got I've got um, cadmium yellow, this cadmium cadmium yellow pale hue, raw sea, uh, burnt sea, yellow ochre, yellow ochre, a load of white, and for my white so I'm using Winton, the mostly Winton colours, Winton with Griffin Alkid titanium white, which I mix with it. This helps everything dry because of the alkyd resin in it. I've got uh, light red, uh, ultramarine, Wins Winton colours, uh, Winton using Cotman, burnt umber, which is Griffin, so that is a uh, fast dryer. That'd be a fast dryer, whatever, however you used it. And burnt sienna, a bit of burnt sienna to go with the blue to make a very nice, lovely, rich, warm dark for the rocks. So, so we'll have a, some rocks coming down here. There's some here. This is just a guide, just an aid memoir. Okay, let's put in a horizon, which would be about, about, about here. Let's take it up a bit higher than than this than the than the screenshot. I just sit in front of the camera, the television, with the camera. And we have, with our BBC, we have some wonderful documentaries because it's public funding, funded. We do have a lot of issues with the BBC, of course. We call it the Biased Broadcasting Corporation. But there are things that it's just absolutely brilliant, brilliant on. Producing subjects like this, the, the documentary for this, which would uh, otherwise be non-commercial, so it wouldn't attract a lot of tension. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do there. I'll clean my brush. Put that uh, lid aside for the evaporate. And keep your brushes clean. I nearly lost, uh, where is it? Uh, this brush this morning, I, I, I used it yesterday for 
uh, uh, no, Saturday for a varnish. And luckily, it was just a tip, and it was solid when I picked it, looked at it this morning. But I've soaked it, a good, good soak, and managed to get the dilute PVA hardened glue out of it. Right, so, Sky. Uh, well, let's uh, we'll, we'll start with the grey, grey blue. A bit of light red, a bit of ultramarine. That will kill the, uh, the blue a little bit and give us a nice muted grey. Light red and ultramarine. Now, when you're inexperienced, you, you, you need to knock up quite a bit to start with of the colour, but I can uh, I can approximate what I've done with, with a new batch of colour. And anyway, we don't put it too, too uh, monotone. So I'll keep this fairly thin. There's nothing wrong in uh, in painting graphically from photographs, it's just uh, it was what the impression is trying to get away from because they used uh, but they used cameras and they didn't do all their work outside by any means. Don't think they're all plein air, plein air painters. See how nicely and quickly you can colour this. Just make it a little bit more blue the next bit and just merge and mingle it a bit more. Darker. Knife painting is a, a very old technique. I once saw a Corbet, just off Corbet in a, a client. So I, I was a carpet fitter for most of my working life. I had my own business. And I went in some lovely houses in London. I worked in some best areas in, in London, Kensington, Knightsbridge, for years. And it was a uh, great privilege. And one of my Clients was a well known. Well, I won't say who he was because well, he's not dead anyway. But, but needless to say, he was a collector, a dealer, an artist. After the war, he collected impressionist paintings from in Europe. And this particular painting was a corbet, and it was done with a knife, and you could hardly tell it was so fine. But absolutely beautiful, lovely to have seen it. So let's get some other colours in there. And the Griffin White, which I've mixed with this, will help it all, all dry. Now when I get to the horizon, I can make that light, the, the, the sea can make it light or make it darker. The counter change. So it's sort of a mid-tone. You don't need to prime your heart that's hardboard with, with a colour because it's a, it's a neutral colour or mid-tone colour itself. Uh, it's just, well, I hope you don't mind me doing these uh, knife paintings. So I did a watercolour on YouTube on Saturday. So I look after all my watercolour colours. Now when you get to your horizon and you do the sea, don't have, a, have it as a solid line. Blend it. Even if it looks solid, like the people I used to put masking tape across here to go, oh, a really exact line. But when I look at, look at them now, paintings up that I've sold or when I see them in friends' houses, I think, oh, I hope they don't notice that. I wish I could have it back to repaint it. You know, that sort of thing. Because it looks rather contrived. 
Might put some lighter cloud in there. Yeah, my, my, my hero is uh, Sir Catherine Williams, died in 2006, I think, or 2004. Wonderful Welsh artist from Anglesey Island. Or oh, Anglesey, not this big island. It's off the north northwest coast of, uh, of Wales. Try to keep your fingers out of the out of the paint. Now let's just bring that, let's just muddy that a little bit over that line there. I've put no uh, gesso on this, I've just primed it with PVA glue. I'm just going down, down a little bit there, so let's just... Okay. Right, let's just get some lighter blue in there now. Just add a little bit of bit of variety to that sky. You can touch a touch of, touch of ochre. Here's a grey. Just warm it up a little bit, a bit more white. I hope you can't hear my radio, I've got it turned right down, but I'm not going to turn it right off. I might want to merge that a little bit. Keeps me company. Does that look like? Yeah, that's all right. Right, now, we'll put in a darker blue, I think, for that horizon. So. Bit of ochre with that, with the blue, hopefully. Yellow ochre and ultramarine white make a quite a good uh, authentic sea colour. Just get that, try and get it level and then I'll, I'll blur it in, merge it. Uh, oops, I hope I'm not uh, masking here. Really see the camera, but it's behind me, over my right shoulder. On a boom, whoops. Right, I'll just clean that off, clean the knife. I'm going to have to go to the shop. Go to the cheap shop and buy another roll of this. It's only two pounds, and it lasts a long time. Let's just clean that up. Right, now we can just merge this. Bring the sky into the sea and the sea into the sky. See what I'm trying to do is just, just merge it so that it's like misty, foggy. Right, 
worth taking a bit of time with that. Okay, well that's, we're not, I think the problem is getting it horizontal. Right, now we can, we can go in with a thicker colour now. Just touch of yellow ochre just to, just to kill it. We're going to cover a lot of ground in now. We've got the white water coming up here. Just mixing in yellow ochre. The thing about wind and colours, they're not super saturated with pigment, but we know that. More blue. Working like this, the, the, the um, solvents, the, the, like the cleaning fluids, like brush cleaners and stuff, really affect my chest now these days. Always, there's years of breathing in carpet dust. So I want to paint with oil. I prefer it to acrylic, of course, but acrylic's got this property that it's non-toxic and it, well, two properties, and it dries quickly, which I like. But you could get this will dry overnight. <laughs> Provided there's enough of the alkyd resin mixing with the other paints, we'll get white in there, or off white. <coughs> oh, how are we doing? Oh, we'll just come down a bit more with this uh, blue here. Over the rocks. You've got to get a variety, you don't want it all dead flat. You've got to have other colours in, in, in this. Some more darks. Alright, oh, okay, let's just get some, some lighter colours in here. Now, we're coming into a sort of a beach here, but a lot of, a lot of crashing waves and, and stuff, so let's just... I'm not going to put the, the uh, rocks in yet because they're going to be quite watery. And I don't want to disturb, disturb too much of it. Now I'm working for the photograph, I'm not trying to do a, a copy of it. I couldn't anyway. I'm not that clever, but... Right? Just a touch of ochre in, in it. I, I don't want it to. <coughs> too white. So we're coming up here. OK, 
okay if we did. I'm not going to do this in two parts. So, so burnt sienna and some ultramarine. On the bluish side. Can be a messy business. Fine, okay. Get some more off white in here. Now, plenty of, plenty of tissue. Get that, get that white and yellow ochre. Over that other rock there. Bit burn on with that. I'll help it dry. Okay, got blue shadowy rocks as well. Not rocks, but, but shadowy uh, waves. Right, now we're getting some bit of darker stuff here. Get in some some wavy stuff. Right in here. Just scraping this blue, bluish sky colour off the palette.
Another rock in there somewhere. Oh, you don't want any lumps on, on your on your primer when you're doing this. I have to put some more white out. So your fingers get mucked up holding the, uh, the cloth or whatever you're using to wipe your your knives. But we don't want too much white. It's easy to overdo it and think, "Oh, the waves crashing." But you've got to have some. reflecting the surroundings I'm going from a from a widescreen picture to a sort of a more sort of squarish format like a bit of composition. Okay. How are we doing? So to keep looking at the screen from my little camcorder. <coughs> so we're coming down, we're really just trying to fill in the, the board. It doesn't matter if some of it, the board shows through. It might be better if, if, if you did prime it with a burnt sienna or something, had bits of it showing through. Nothing wrong with, with the ground showing. If I live near the sea, I would uh, be a lot better at it than I am. Being landlocks. As we're coming into the foreground, we'll Adding some different colours. I'm going to there's some more rocks in here. I'm going to I'm going to probably make them larger. But let's get a bit of um, burnt sienna with a bit of bit of ochre. Just, just add a little bit of, bit of colour there. Just a little bit of warmth, just just to break up the, the flatness of that of that wash on there.
Now this is where you need your, 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 your darks or your darker colours behind behind the wave behind the waves. Then against that you can put your lights. If this gets a bit boring, you can always fast forward, can't you? Get to the uh, the better bits. Okay, now I've, I reckon we could probably go for a bigger rock here. Burn Sienna. The lumber. Okay, all sorts of colours in this rock here. Save some of my white paint. Mixing the two, the ochre and the sienna. Saves a bit of paint, doesn't it? Great colour for beaches is uh, burnt, burnt umber, a bit of the ochre, bit of white. Get some paint on here and then worry about it's gonna, gonna look like in a minute. Merge.
put the beach gun up here a bit. Yeah. Once we've done this, we filled this in here, we can start titivating it. To try and make it look like an impression of what we're trying to do. Looking a bit iffy tomorrow, the weather for our bike ride on the River One. Day. Me and the old mate. Try to get a movement in. Everything's got to be painted as intensely as every other area, even if it doesn't look like it. Well, having said that, I think the, the Mary Cassar, great French Impressionist, I think she, she used to leave a lot of, I think it was her, leave a lot of her foreground, or her, the ground colour showing through, like a cross between burnt sienna and burnt umber. Well, I'm going to change my knife now to a smaller trowel. Put in some bits and pieces. You'll be surprised at how much paint you throw away. Yeah, so show some of those reflections in the wet, wet sand. grey colour. That's quite tacky there. It's because the, uh, the resin has started to do its magic. Now let's get a bit of shadow colour in it, bit of bit of that light red, and then that blue and a bit of that umber.
Right. I'm going to take a chance and see if I put that in a frame and move the camera back. Or oh, one might not have to. All right, let's make sure my hands are fairly clean. Uh, okay, what I've done, I've got the uh, I've got uh, this framed here, but it's got its cord in the back. I'm just going to see if I can undo it. These frames are not going to go anywhere, they're old frames, so I had my watercolours in, funny enough. My early watercolours, my sister had them. When you look over your old paintings, you think, oh dear, I'm ashamed of that. But people, they don't grow as you grow, your, your purchases or ones you've given to, to friends and close relatives. We all give stuff away. We're a generous crowd of artists. But you can't give everything away. Take the money. But I look back over some of my stuff that I thought was good when I did it. And I think, oh yeah. Oh. I hope it fits. Wear an apron over at least over your knees. So I hardly use. I put out some cadmium yellow light, and I never used it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That fits. But right, so I'm going to have to just. I've just gone over that a little bit. Just scraped it a little bit. That's okay. Uh, right, there we are. One one knife painting for a Monday morning. Oh, it took me a long while to get going. Comes to twelve o'clock. Just short camera a little bit, bear with me. There we go. So there's a there's a little uh, simple, it was a simple one. The hardest thing is, is uh, covering it with paint with a small knife but uh, let's just get a nice bit of, bit of light and just do that. Right, I can't do any more, more than that. That's what it is. Um, I suppose I could try to put a signature on it. Always sign your work with my little brush. My white spirit. It's nearly evaporated. Well, I use a bit of light red, I think. Mm. Right, that's it. Let's clean, clean the stuff out of the brush, and then wash it in the. Uh, White spirit, and get it nice and clean. And then, if you want to, wash it in a bit of soap and water. Okay, folks, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I might do a watercolour later on, keep everybody happy. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.